Argentina. Well, good morning, folks. It's very early in the morning. The sun is up, but the sun is up. And I'm here in Golden Bridge. And I'm ready to tackle stage three of St. Declan's Way. Today is going to be a long hike, 30 kilometers plus, over the hills that are presently shrouded in low-lying cloud. But wish me well, I'm up for the task. Stage three, 30 plus kilometers all the ways to Mount Mallory and on down into Lismore. So from a gorgeous morning in Goaton Bridge in County Tipperary, we'll chat to you, I'll chat to you along the way. Okay, bye bye for the moment. morning again folks it's quite early as I said and I've left Goaton Bridge in the last 15 minutes and um, now beginning to feel the first of the hills as I head in to the forestry area on the lower slopes of the Knockmill Downs I'll be bidding farewell very shortly to Tertiary Roads and it'll be forestry for quite a long time. So, again, blessed with the weather. It's, you can see, no jacket. In fact, didn't bring a jacket at all today. Very humid. The cloud has increased a little bit there in the last 20 minutes. I'm now 20 minutes out of Goaton Bridge and I'm fighting fit for this baptismal of fire in the hills on the Knock Mill Down Mountains in South Tipperary. All on my own, I think I get the ultimate maximum benefit of this pilgrim walk by walking alone. I can hear, I can think, I can talk to you of course. So thank you for tagging along. So I get on with it at the moment and uh, put some more miles behind me. Lismore is a long, long ways off today. But I'm committed and ready for this for all my sins <laughs> and for everybody else's sins i walk alone on the pilgrim path today from golden bridge in county tipperary to lismore in county waterford it's a tough life so somebody has to do it this is going to be an isolated couple of hours, I fear. I haven't really begun the steep climb northward as yet, but very shortly now. This is the kind, this is the kind of activity that certainly eliminate, eliminates the cobweb syndrome. Early morning cobweb syndrome. Get up and get out and enjoy the great outdoors and the fresh air. Thank you. 
pushing myself into this hill so that I can clear the pain and torture part of this particular stage, early stage three, and then enjoy the flat open mountain part and down into Mount Mallory. So, as I say, it's, my God, it's terribly humid. And there's not sign of human or animal, apart from a few birds checking me out, wondering what this idiot is doing at this hour of the day. Now perhaps many of you have been to this historic site on the top of the Knockmill Downs, the Liam, the Liam Lynch Memorial Monument. Now you can drive up here if the barrier at the car park is left open, but if the barrier at the car park is closed, it's a hike. It's taken me an hour and ten minutes to come from Goten Bridge Village, from the bridge in Goten Bridge to here. So, um, it's a hike, so be prepared for that and it's, it's, it certainly is a hike. William Fanahan Lynch, born on the 20th of November, 1892, and died on the 10th of April, 1923, was an officer in the Irish Republican Army during the Irish War of Independence of 1919 to 1921. During much of the Irish Civil War, he was Chief of Staff of the, of the Irish Republican Army. On the 10th of April 1923, Lynch was killed whilst trying to escape an encirclement by Free State troops in South Tipperary. In 1909, at the age of 17, he started an apprenticeship in O'Neill's hardware shop in Mitchellstown, where he joined the Gaelic League and the Ancient Order of Hibernians. Later, he worked at J. Barry & Sons Hardware Merchants in Fermoy. In the aftermath of the 1916 Easter Rising, he witnessed David and Thomas Kent of Barnard House in Castellines been taken through Fermoy after their arrest by the Royal Irish Constabulary. After this, he determined to dedicate his life to Irish Republicanism. In 1917, he was elected First Lieutenant of the Irish Volunteer Company based in Fermoy. In Cork, Lynch reorganised the Irish Volunteers the paramilitary organization that became the Irish Republican Army in 1919, becoming a commandant of the Cork No. 2 Brigade of the IRA during the guerrilla Anglo-Irish War. He helped capture a senior British officer, General Cuthbert Lucas, in June 1920, shooting a Colonel Danford in the incident. Lucas later escaped while being held by the IRA in County Clare. Lynch was captured together with other officers of the Cork No. 2 Brigade in a British raid on Cork City Hall in August 1920. On the 10th of April 1923, a National Army unit was seen approaching Lynch's secret headquarters in the Knock Milldown Mountains. Lynch was in possession of important papers that he knew had to not fall into enemy hands, so he and his six comrades attempted to evade them. To their shock, they ran into another unit of about 50 National Army soldiers approaching from the opposite direction. Lynch was shortly afterwards hit by rifle fire from the road at the foot of the hill. Knowing the value of the papers they carried, he ordered his men, including soon to be Chief of Staff Frank Aiken, to leave him behind. When the National Army soldiers reached Lynch, they initially believed to be 
Eamon de Valera. But he informed them, I am Liam Lynch, Chief of Staff of the Irish Republican Army. Get me to a priest and doctor, I'm dying. His last wish was to be buried next to his comrade, Michael Fitzgerald. In late 1920, Fitzgerald had died after a 67-day hunger strike. Lynch was carried on an improvised stretcher manufactured from guns of Nugent's, formerly Walsh's pub in Newcastle, at the foot of the mountains, and was later brought to the hospital in Clonmel, where he died that evening at 9 p.m. He was bar- he was buried two days later at Kilcrumper Cemetery near Fermoy in County Cork. Well, as I depart, the Liam Lynch m- monument here on the summit of the Knockmill Downs, the weather seems to have turned against me a little bit. It's quite chilly, but um, because I'm facing into more hills, I'm still in the t-shirt. It's quite chilly up here now. As I was uh, doing a bit of filming there at the Liam Lynch Memorial Monument, a lady from Knock Lofty came a calling with two dogs and we were chatting there for five minutes and she was discussing the risk of walking alone. Well, I think you know my feeling on that. I've encountered two Bowsies, Gorriers, on the first stage in Cashel uh, a week and a half ago and uh, they were sent on their way and anybody else that comes looking for trouble, that's exactly what they'll get. But she was talking about that, sir. Her husband had been telling her that there is a risk in these days about walking alone in isolated places. This is an isolated place, very isolated place. My thinking on the whole lot of this is you can't really start getting yourself into a tizzy about if I go out this morning or go out this afternoon, will I be safe? You then tell somebody else about your fear, and then they have a fear. And before you know who you are, you have a whole circle of friends or acquaintances who question the idea of going for a jaunt or a walk or a whatever it is, a walk or a run, whatever. Put those ideas out of your heads. So that said, I'm heading off down into deeper forest now. Now, we're heading off the forestry trail into the unknown. Grassy pathway leading straight upwards. So the old body is going to get another workout. And we come to the first stile, the crossover stile. It's new forestry, as you can see to my right. So there's no shelter. Were you to encounter inclement weather up here, you would want to have the gear packed in behind you because I'm walking here now in a t-shirt, bare sleeves with a backpack, four kilos in weight. And I can tell you, I don't find the cold, but that there's a wind chill factor of sorts blowing at my arms, nibbling at my flesh. So, but I'm going to keep on the pressure until I get off the, the mountainside here. But it's still beautiful walking territory, but it's quite rough underfoot. But it's, 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 this place is very isolated now, so you need to take care. You would need to take care. We are advised by the powers to be on the documents supporting 
the St. Dixon's Way walk, that there's no quads, no dogs, no motorbikes, um, and no camping. I was just thinking there, wouldn't this, this just oh, sugar, bog, 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 and bog here now. And um, wouldn't this be an, an unbelievable place to wake up in the morning to, the, the, the view is beyond all. So we must get over another style here. This is a super duper one. Up and over and down the other side. But wouldn't this be a great place to wake up in the morning? It would be. Camping here amongst the, uh, the gorse, you'd have the world to yourself apart from the, apart from nature. But it's not advised and I can see why. I mean, in dry weather, lighting fires and things here could be quite detrimental to the countryside, as we've seen in parts of Kerry. Up to this point in editing, I failed to find out from any maps and the literature as to what this building that you're now looking at might have been. To me it looks like an old British army barracks or an outpost or perhaps an RIC shell from the Civil War or whatever but um, I can't identify it unfortunately here in this video um, at the moment uh, but no doubt somebody will surface and tell me what it was and what it was used for but it's on the St. Declan Way this is how I increase the kilometers I don't usually stay all the time on the um, on the pathway on the official pathway, if I see something across a field or the side of a hill or just over the fence line, there's a bit of climbing to be done. It all in increases the steps and the distance. The stone walls here are unbelievable, I'll show you now. The thickness, they're probably two and a half meters from inside to outside. I don't know why the stone walls are here. This must have been some sort of a British army camp lookout post. I have to go and do the history when I'm doing the video. Just think about this. There are millions of stones here on this wall behind me. This is in the middle of no place. I'd be surprised to meet anybody up here, apart from somebody maybe at the weekends on this walk. But I reckon every stone that's, that's lying there on this wall was brought in and placed by hand. Can I say it once more? Once more, please. Okay, once more. I just cannot describe to you the peace and the quietness and the just sense of absolute and total isolation here. It is incredible. On this third stage of the St. Declan Way, since I began this morning early, I've encountered many different landscapes. The variation of, um, of track conditions. This is very sheltered in here now. I'm still in the bare, sleep, bare hands. get down off the Knockmildown Mountains, you eventually reach this tertiary Tom Macadam Road. 
I haven't met another human being since I left Liam Lynch Monument and um, I'm continuing on my way. The next port to call should be the RIC barracks, which I'll show you. As I continue on my onward and upward trek, there's a fair climb here from the valley up to where you reach the Waterford border, the Tipperary Waterford border. So I have slackened the pace a little bit. The backpack tends to get heavier on hills like this but it gives you the impression that it's never ending but it'll end someplace sooner or later not going to give up now surely be the goodness haven't walked from the peak of that hill there in the foreground to your left all the way up to here it's now windswept and I found my accommodation for the night no need for air conditioning here. I've reached the Tipperary Waterford border. So, welcome to County Waterford. Ah. Oh. It's been a while getting here, but I've made it. So at last, my trek from Goaten Bridge in South Tipperary brings me to the border of Tipperary Waterford. So now it's downhill into Mount Melry, County Waterford. Okay, so now inside County Waterford, I'm coming on down the hill and the first point of interest that I see here is on my left and it's the stone ruined structure of the old RIC barracks. This one is highlighted on the, um, on the St. Declan Way maps and brochure and documentation. So stop and have a, a gawk around at it. It's a historical place, windswept. Imagine the winters up here. Imagine carry on up here. What you're looking at here is the old RIC barracks. I had to raise my voice a little bit because there's quite a, a stiff easterly wind blowing here to my left so, so that you can hear me. It's the ruined shell of the old RIC barracks. So I'll be walking along this road now behind me for a while, and then I'll be going back into forest to territory to gain access to the Mount Melry Abbey. This remote barracks was built and staffed in the early 1800s to provide a police presence in this mountainous area. By the 1890s it was abandoned and was later destroyed by the IRA during the War of Independence. Not a very comfortable place to be walking with bare sleeves, but it's part of the St. Declan's Way. So, as I, as I said to you back the row there a while ago, whatever I encounter today, I'm going to accept. Walking along here, I was just thinking about reincarnation. And I hear you say, my goodness, what's wrong with him now? Reincarnation. When I walk through territory like this, 
and for the past 20 minutes or so, the hills are alive, not with the sound of music, but with the sound of music from sheep and newborn spring lambs. Well, where does the reincarnation come into the equation? Well, I certainly do not want to come back as a sheep or a lamb and be placed on the bleak hillsides of West County Waterford because my goodness, could you imagine a bad day or winter in these parts? My goodness me. So there it is. I'm not coming back as a sheep or a lamb. What about coming back as a long distance walker? Hey, that's not a bad, that's not a bad thing to wish for. Now standing here outside this cottage, I was just thinking, could I have my lunch here? and perhaps spend a night? What do you think? As I keep saying to you and all the different things that I show you along the way since I began the St. Declan's Way pilgrimage walk, if the stones of this little cottage could tell tales, it was once a happy home, no doubt, a family born and, or born and reared in here. Can you imagine if those walls could tell stories? It's a lonesome, this is a very lonesome part of the track. Very, very lonesome. Windswept, desolate, cold. Well, lo and behold, walking along here in, on a wind-swept wind hillside, looking here at some sheep, I heard the cuckoo. I haven't heard the cuckoo since last year, and I heard, I heard him in Kerry last year, but I've just heard the cuckoo over here on this hill towards my right. Um, if I stood here long enough, I suppose I'd probably here is again. I'm standing here at Glen Tawna Tinna Bridge in the heart of the Knock Milldown Mountains. It is also known as Burns Bridge after a local family and spans the Glenafalia River. In St. Declan's lifetime, this upland area between the counties of Tipperary and, Tip and Waterford was known as Schlieve Jigua. As he travelled back and forth between Ardmore and Cashel, Declan would have crossed these mountains regularly. So, I've now left the Tarmacadam Road leading from the water for Tipperary Water down by the RIC barracks, the old ruined barracks, and here to Burns Bridge. I'm now, after entering another forestry track, which will take me over the hill, the highest part of St. Declan's Way, um, to Mount Millery. More hills ahead of me. More hills. As I walk up hill again, I've just heard the cuckoo to my left. Now, I must keep my ears open and try and pick him up on the equipment to prove to you all that I did Hear the cuckoo. Hi, hi folks, I can tell you 
take it from me that this stage three of the St. Declan Pilgrim Way will test your strength, your resilience, your determination, your patience, because the hills are absolutely killing. So be prepared. You'll get through, but be prepared. I've had to knock down a half dozen gears to get me up the one behind me. Whatever bad things that we've all done in our lives, take it from me. Coming on this St. Declan's third stage is penance. Oh my God, it's penance. So now I'm on Flat Mountain. That hill was pure, whoo, pure murder. But look, I'm up here now. You get through this gate. And we get on to open mountain top for the descend to Mount Millery. On a lighter note, just thinking there, getting my breath back. If St. Declan did this walk from Ardmore to Cashel, Cashel to Ardmore on a regular basis, which we have told him he did, and some of the monks. St. Declan, some man. You are some man and your crew because this is a cobweb shaker without any stretch of the imagination. But I have met nobody since I left, um, since I left Liam Lynch Monument way back, a thousand miles back. <laughs> and I just keep thinking, if you twisted your ankle here or broke your knee or hurt your hip or took a bad fall, would you be found? I know you would be found with modern technology, but this, you need a level of fitness. Don't be told, don't convince yourself. This requires a level of stamina. Above what you normally would do on your Sunday morning walk, this is a heartbreaker. So be aware, walkers beware. There was a song many years ago in the charts, in the Irish charts, the Rocky Road to Dublin. Well, this is the Rocky Road to Mount Mellory and on to Lismore. And it is rocky. Well, hello again. I'm here on a very rocky road, a rocky track across the side of the Knockmill Downs. Very elevated here, coming to the highest point on this St. Uh, Declan's Way. So, I as yet haven't taken my lunch, but Shortly now I'll find a space crossing a bit of a ravine here now with a man-made structure. 
um, I find a place and I'll sit down for 15 minutes and have the lunch. I think the body is craving sustenance right now. These gullies are washouts. Can you imagine the, tor the torrents of water that would come down from the hills up there? I mean, you can see the wash away and it continues on down into the, the tree line. But there would be horrendous, a horrendous flow of water coming through here in wet times. Well here on the side of a very exposed mountain the cuckoo has been singing away for me as I pass through a clump of trees so I hope it came out on the um, on the audio I don't have a headset with me so I'd say and he's still Now, we have reached the top. This is the highest point, altitude-wise, on the St. Eklund's Trail. I think it's 440 meters above sea level. But the, the scenery here is majestic. Coupled, of course, with the song of the cuckoo. Hear him? That's a bonus sound for today. So I add to the mini pile on the highest point altitude wise on St. Declan's Pilgrim Way. I add my contribution to the pile. I'm here at the top of the world and I'm just about to head down into Mount Mallory looking at the mountain there in front of me right behind you there seems to be a recent burning a bit early in the year for that but you can see what a magnificent vista is behind me there so I'm making this I'm claiming this little piece of ground for my lunch I've seen two buzzards a kestrel heard the cuckoo on a few occasions seen a fox seen some swallows now it's lunch time it's time now for me talking about a room with a view i mean the view that i have sitting here having my bit of lunch fantastic place loads of wildlife here but the place here has been burned whatever happened recent burning so now I'm fed and watered well and truly and I've set my sights on Mount Mallory between all the photographing photography and drone flying and looking at different things along the way and listening to the cuckoo I'm I've delayed myself, but then again, there's no records to be broken today. I'm on a pilgrimage. 
for my sins. But anyway, coming down off the peak of this hill, it was quite chilly up there having my, my lunch. I'm now sheltered with the forest to my left and a great expanse of marshland and uh, heather to my right. Fantastic place to be walking. Well, uh, I've arrived here at the source. The source being the supply for Mount Mallory. The place is called the source. Well, at last, I've reached the well site. So I can see the towers of the abbey straight in front of me that way. So this is um, Mount Mallory Well building, historic in its own way. Okay folks, well to prove that I've actually begun in Goten Bridge this morning and now I've arrived at Mount Melry Abbey. So that leg is complete. So now number two, phase two of the third stage is from here to, to, to Lismore. So now I'm gonna take off in that direction.
I'm about 35, 45 minutes to Lismore. That's been a huge walk today. It's been the biggest walk that I've done for a long time. But I've thoroughly enjoyed it. But let me reiterate. The mountainous section from the other side, from this side of um, Golden Bridge, it's pretty heavy going. You want to be pretty up for the hills up, the rough terrain, and the distances. The distances seem enormous. Well, they are really when you think of it. So, before I conclude today's adventure in the wilderness, I'll give you my distance before I shut down. Okay, and the sun is out, so the gods are with me. Well, there's some god with me anyway. Just when you think that you're a direct route down into Lismore, we come on this section. So we have to follow the way markers instead of heading straight down into Lismore town. I made a deviation to the left and then to the right and I find myself here. So I'm back up now to my 6.2 kilometers an hour trek after the horrendous punishment I took this morning on the Knockmill Down Mountains. <laughs> Well, I've arrived in Lismore. I'm on the outskirts of the town by the, the tributary of the Blackwater. You can see the turrets of Lismore Castle, the home, the Irish home of the Duke of Devonshire, where Walter Raleigh spent some time, many times, many years ago. So it's been a huge walk today, but the conditions were ideal. It didn't rain after all. So I got the whole run, the whole walk in, in my bare arms. So probably under the sun tan. So I'll go on and I'll finish the video just at the bridge with the castle overlooking the River Blackwater, okay? So I've made it to Lismore, 38 kilometers in all. All good today, weather gorgeous. So that completes the third stage of the St. Declan's Way pilgrim walk. Thanks for tagging along. Take care. Bye-bye for the moment.